Top was Adima hits the ground running as he initiates probe of contracts awarded in the state from 10 years ago. An Islamic movement of Nigeria cries out, worried that Ibrahim El Zagzaki may die in custody. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Very glad you could join us on the program tonight. Now, the new governor of Imo State, Hope Zadima, who was inaugurated just yesterday, has started the process of probing the contracts awarded from 2010 till date. The governors that rules the state within the 10-year frame are Ikedio Hakim, Rochas Okorocha, and Emeka Ihedioha. I wonder, is this the best move to begin an administration that is supposed to be anchored on rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery? Joining us in the studio is political analyst Chuka Ihono. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll be joined a little later by a telephone um, by a legal practitioner, Liboros Oshoma. For now, let's get started with Chuka. Who's a demand's first move? It says freezing all states' accounts and probing past administration's contracts uh, that was awarded. What's your take? Um, well, a few things. Um, he started from 2010. I'm not sure why he can't go far, you know, maybe back to 1999, for instance, and even possibly 1960. So um, I don't know what he wants to achieve within that 2010 to 2019. Is he saying the work is a bit too much for him if he goes a bit further back or what exactly? Um, sometimes I wonder when people do things like this, why are you excluding other people before 2010? But wouldn't that be too much for him to, within, I mean, probably in chunks that are manageable? He has not said he's doing them in chunks. So I would have preferred if he had said, I'm probing this state completely. We're going to start from this to this in the first phase, and then we have a second phase and a third. And then he has asked for four days to do it. Yes. That's not serious, quite frankly. You can't do it in four days. In four days, you're just going to pick up some people, some scapegoats, and move on. That's not enough. You have to do things properly. And to do things properly, you see, we, we rush, we, 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 we do things too quickly. And that's why we never do anything properly. He can start as governor. Nobody's going to, I mean, he's won at the Supreme Court now. So he's not, he shouldn't feel any like fear of, you know, being removed or anything. Um, he should concentrate on the work. He should come in there and do his job and stop making announcements that make him look like he's the savior of the state of the people and all that. That's basically my problem with what he's doing. Okay, I, I, um, I'm told um, Liboros Oshoma is on the phone, so we'll just put him um, on the spot immediately. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay, you, you heard Chuka's uh, points on the yes. first moves by Uzodimma. What's your take? Yes, um, first and foremost, let me quickly correct an impression. Um, you know, Achiki Udenwa was um, the governor of Imo State in 1999 to 2003. And then in 2003, Ohakim came on board. Um, when Urocha Sokorocha came in, I think the first thing he also did was to probe the administration of um, Ikebi Ohakim and Achiki Udenwa. And, and so there is already a report, a probe, report of what happened in those two administrations. And I think that is why the current governor is starting his probe from that of uh, Rocha Sokorocha. And like I said earlier on, I think it's a way of um, looking back, finding out what had happened before, what are the pitfalls, how were they done, and then to learn from those things correct them if possible, uh, call out people if need be, and so he can avoid making the same mistake if it's truly altruistic or genuine in moving the state forward. Um, Liberos, let, let me ask you, this, is not, this seems to be a recurrent. You just um, um, reiterated that some governors in the past have done uh, this probe. What yeah. has been the outcome? Has the outcome influenced what they did subsequently? Yes, um, to some extent, I know, to a very large extent. If you remember, after the probe by Rocha Sukurocha, 
in 2011 or 2007 or so, Rocha Sokorocha first term was um, was uh, was a, was it was a bit better than what Imo had experienced. So, which was what even actually gave him second term against um, Ikedio, uh, Emeka Ikedioha. Because a lot of people felt Rochas took the state away from what they knew before. After the probe, he avoided what led O'Hakim and uh, Atiko Dewa to the, make the mistakes that they made in their tenure. So, but Rochas, because of the attitude of our governor, the short memories, and they always think they are, they are emperors. I think Midway Rochas completely lost it and wanted to harness the state into his personal estate. Right. So his second term was like a disaster. He didn't learn from it. That was why I said yes and no. Okay, Chuka, let, let, let's move the conversation a little bit away from um, his first move to look at the theme that seems to be captured already. He's talking about uh, rehabilitation, reconstruction, recovery. All of them is a different way of saying rescuing the people from yes. maybe a bad situation yes. that they have. According to him, um, he will revive the state and make it work again. These were the same promises that was given <laughs> by the previous uh, Okoroche's rescue mission. Do you agree and is this um, a good thing? Um, I think it's what they always say. Every one of them says this. He sounded exactly like Rochas, um, you know, with this promise. And um, Libros is right in saying that Rochas probably used the first term to look good. And after that, Second term, he really didn't care or something like that. Although this probe by um, um, the new man, Uzodema, might show that that was never even the case in the first place and that the whole thing was just a mirage and even his first term was a disaster. But that's why he, I mean, let's see what comes out of his probe. But this is the same thing. We all hear this. <laughs> so I don't take it seriously. Okay, um, Liboros, let, let me ask you the question about forgiveness. Um, uh, in his speech, he also talked about an attempt to take away his um, hard-earned mandate uh, in his call to rebuild, uh, rebuild the state. Uh, he was fourth place in the election, um, from what we know, and the legalities of the Supreme Court's ruling is still being debated by you lawyers. What's your take? Yeah, uh, this is a hydra-headed one, but uh, let me uh, uh, attempt to first and foremost bite from the last question you asked Chuka. I completely agree with Chuka that these are slogans, rescue, reha reconstruction, rehabilitation, and all of those things. What the people want to see is to hit the ground running, set your hands on the plow, and then the people will now begin to give you names that, oh, this man is actually reconstructing and rehabilitating and, and rescuing. So leave all these slogans. We were tired of hearing slogans. You can set an agenda and say, this is my agenda. But this idea of uh, having slogans, Rochas had the same thing, rescue mission, family, and uh, we all knew how he rescued his pocket eventually. And so on the issue of the Supreme Court, yeah, I agree. It is still heavily debated by lawyers. Uh, but uh, from um, available, so like I said, what this basically has uh, revealed is that in Nigeria we need a more transparent electoral process. We can no longer continue like this. We should be able to determine at the poll who actually, who actually the actual winner is. This idea of, oh, this vote that came in were forged or were not forged, and then allowing a panel of seven to actually determine the effect of more, almost a million people in the state, for me, is a, is a no no. I think we need to depart from there. If we continue to allow the courts to detect for us, yes, also sometimes the courts are displayed by sentiment. But um, uh, Uzo, I hope Uzo should forget all of those uh, years he's had the victory. If this judgment could have gone either way, the same way it went the other way at the court of first instance and at the tribunal. Some oh. other governors who are celebrating victory today, also their judgment could have gone either way. 
So I, I don't, wouldn't want to see it as a hard, a hard fought victory by anybody. Um, Rebecca Hedio has said the same thing. Now, uh, Hopus Odima is saying the same thing. These are mere rhetoric. Yesterday, I agree that whatever happened, let them, they are all from the same state, evil. And they should look at the history of the state. This is the same shit that people like Samu Bakwe once sat. And that was a, even a bigger state. And the legacy of somebody like Samu Bakwe, till date, no governor has been able to match it. Even though he had a limited resources, he was Imo uh, Abia and some part of a boy. And the man was able, in four years, was able to give and provide to the people what governance is about. None of the state governors that have governed after him have been able to replicate it. So what um, Hopus Odema should be bothering himself about now is, look, there is a foot. There is a so large and so big set by our forefathers and predecessors in office. And I would want to see how much of that we can measure. All right, I'm not let's... going to hard, hard fought victory or uh, forgiveness. And, uh, you know, there should be a holistic approach to governance. All right, Let, let's, 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 so let's, let's allow <laughs> Chuka to also um, add uh, his input on this. Um, you actually uh, preempted the next question I was going uh -huh. to ask, and that was, what should be Uzodema's focus at this time? It's, in your opinion? It should be getting um, the basics right uh, or beginning to set them on the right path. What's his program for education, health, and infrastructure? That's really what he should be concentrating on now um, and not making announcements about who he's going after. Um, he can go after them even more silently than he's saying and when he's ready, reveal to us what he has found out. In the meantime, schools will be working, roads will be moving, uh, what, what else? Uh, health centers be built or in construction. That's what he should be doing in four days, not trying to announce to me about four days to probe ex administrations. He can even use the whole of his administration to probe the others and come back in four years. I don't mind. Just do some work and let us get on with it. Okay, um, uh, let's look at some of the shenanigans that went with the Supreme Court's ruling and all of that. Um, of mention, of particular mention, um, is uh, Father, Reverend Father Mbaka. And the reason I'm bringing him in this conversation is because he was at the inauguration um, of the new uh, governor, in spite of you know, people speaking from different fronts. I'm going to look at someone's comments about this, um, um, an, an, an allegation that he wasn't uh, spoken to uh, by God. But before we get there, is his presence at the inauguration really necessary, or is it to amplify the message that there is a divine mandate? I think he was trying to amplify that because he thinks or he knows that this country is full of simpletons who haven't been to school. The truth of the matter is he has no business being there. If he knows God spoke to him, he should go and sit down somewhere else during the inauguration and we will bring up his, uh, his divine messaging. Um, he doesn't need to be there. I think what he's doing really is that he's making himself look like um, uh, there's something fishy about what's going on, almost as if there was no divine revolution to him, and he was part of a grand plan for what might well be a grand plan on our hands right now to bring somebody into office. I have not alleged that it is indeed the case, but it could be. Anything could happen. This is Nigeria. So. Okay, I'll still pull the same question to you, Liborius. Uh, what should be the place of religion in our politics today? Because this conversation, some persons say, say shouldn't even be in the center um, of this entire uh, process? You know, I, 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 love, I love my profession. Um, during our court uh, bar dinner, when um, the body of ventures are seated for the dinner, there's a very simple prayer they say, for this food we are about to eat, we thank thee. You add your Allah. If the only wants to add is Jesus Christ, you can add them silently. There is no time for all of those. Let the Christian pray. Let the Muslim pray. Let the Holocoman pray. Let the Ibrahim man pray. Let the Alikaman pray. By which time, a lot of things 
would have been left undone. It is the same thing with governance. Government politics should be completely separated from religion. Are you there? Well, with you. Yeah. So you find out that e even in um, the early city, Greek city states, they tried to merge politics with religion, but that didn't work. And you saw even till today, the church is still apologizing for the atrocities they committed in the name of uh, politics and religion. And in Nigeria today, we see that we have a lot of uh, religious people, but less godly. And so, like, some of the issues we raised and discussed uh, in one of our programs in the studio earlier on is the fact that because uh, the religion is the opium of the masses now, so you see politicians are... It's like they're giving the masses a dose of what they want. And so that is why people like Fadam Baka, even though um, in Senate society, nobody would pay mention of him, um, with all due respect, but it's become very relevant today because of some form of uh, predictions that I think were not from the Holy Spirit, but personal information. Fadam Baka, to me, is somebody who, who's, who, who looks as a cash and carry you know, religious person. From his ultrasound, if you remember, before Buhari's tenure, he said Gulag Jonathan came, they promised him money, they didn't uh, fulfill the promise they made during his harvest, and he said they would stay. Peter Abi came, he said Peter Abi did not donate money, and because of that, he would stay. So what's the guarantee also that Opus uh, Odima <coughs> did not go to consult and uh, donate money to all of those traditions? And now you see him, it's almost like the spiritual advisor. Now, what I, I think he should concern himself with, he has predicted that there is a new hope. I think what he should be doing now is to actually sit down in his corner and pray to God, it truly is serving God, that that is prediction of a new list of hope should actually come to pass. And continually and consistently remind the governor, using his stupid, if truly, that he has a pact with God, and that pact should be to bring a new lease of life and a new hope to emo people, and All not right. to be seen junketing with politicians and, and backstabbing. Yes. For me, it actually also puts a spin in that his uh, position by, 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 by his appearance and approach. Uh, All right. Um, um, do you, let me ask you about the... There is this comment in the background, people are saying it. There is the controversy that I actually brought us earlier about the, you know, the legalities of the Supreme Court ruling and the argument, the debate that it has brought. Now, there's this um, um, columnist that came up with the argument, uh, still on this Mbaka issue, that he was a tool to gently ease in, that's the word now, a pre-planned verdict of victory. And then some other persons are bringing up the argument of Uche Wosu's withdrawal from the case just before judgment was issued. And then there is this cacophony of voices yeah. saying that um, um, Uche Wosu might have an agenda that the APC has at the same time. Should we just push all of this as just hearsay? Or do you think that coming from people who should know about the politics of this country, it deserves um, a second thought. Well, I think probably Liberos, who's a legal man, might say or might agree if I say that um, in the end, the Supreme Court has spoken and there's probably no way to go back now. Um, so we can only continue to you know, conjecture what might have happened, what plan may have led to this Supreme Court ruling, if indeed it is, it is that the ruling is um, corrupt. Uh, and, um, and we're probably never going to be any the better for it. Um, whenever we are, it will be too late, because I think by then this government would have come and gone, and it would just be something in history for us to recount and wonder how we were tricked or whatever at the time. So. Um, I think there's a side. I think there's a there's a there's a bit of a finish, complete sort of thing to all that has happened because of the ruling. That okay. I think Are everybody's you? everybody's going to go home uh, with whatever conjecture they have. And has uh, to he is hope Uzodima. Are you hopeful that he will be good to emo people? 
Uh, not really, because uh, of Nigerians, the antecedents of Nigerian politicians and how we bring people up, how we claim victory and then lose it and give it to somebody else. It's all a game. And so I don't, no, I don't have any hope in his uh, ability to move his state forward. But maybe he will. All right, your final thoughts uh, tonight, Laborious. Yeah, uh, I disagree with uh, Chuka a little bit on the, the Supreme Court. And then your question on the Uche Uwosu's withdrawal. Uche Uwosu did not withdraw. What happened was on the 10th of December 2019, when the Supreme Court uh, gave judgment in his case, the Supreme Court said Uche Uwosu was not the validly nominated candidate for AA because votes accrued to him for AA. And uh, on the ground that he couldn't have been a candidate for two parties, because a faction of the APC actually also adopted him. The faction that approached as a brother, his father in law belongs. And so, be that as it may, not being a candidate in the party, of a party in the matter, he couldn't have challenged the outcome of an election. So, it was on that note that he withdrew his petition, because the petition had no longer had leg, leg to stand on. And so the moment that petition was withdrawn, what that means is that the votes for Ucho Wosu became wasted votes in, in the eye of the law. And then the legality and technicalities of the issues at the Supreme Court, quickly, if you permit me, is the fact that once a petitioner alleged wrongful exclusion of votes in his election, in the election, and the results are admitted. The onus of proving the irregularity of those votes now shifts to the respondent. In all of the matters, as from the tribunal to the court of appeal to the Supreme Court, the, res the petition, the respondent, sorry, that's the Mecca Hedioa and INEC, did not place any material votes before the court to contradict the votes that uh, Mecca, that uh, Hopu Zodima was alleged, alleging to have scored, but were wrongly excluded from his vote. Not contradicting those votes became very fatal to their case at the Supreme Court. What, is basic, what basically play, played out is that somebody said, look, I have, I have 400 and something votes. You said, no, it was 996,000 votes I had. And he's able to prove that there were votes that you excluded, but you didn't you know, also contradict those allegations. What the Supreme Court simply did was, like A, B, and C, since you have not contacted this documentary evidence, we accept them and we add those goods to his vote, and he carries the day. So what it means is that you take it back to, as if it is the day of the election, where votes were counted and announced, and those wrongly excluded added to the original vote, and then the fourth person became the winner. So Laura, what I you you saying, have to wrap up quickly. Yes, I'm wrapping up now. What I'm saying now, if we had an electronic system of voting, then we wouldn't have been bothering about this man-made errors of exclusion, uh, invalid vote, or wrongful exclusion or not. Because the votes, you will see them. As people are voting, it will be shown electronically. Then you eliminate man-made errors. I think that's the next thing we should be thinking of. And once we do that, the interference or the, the conclusion or the, the idea of the Supreme Court determine whether the electoral fire made errors or not will be completely eliminated. All That's right, Laboris. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the program tonight. My pleasure. And Chika, thank you so far. You we'll be much. back with you in a bit. Um, we'll, we'll take a short break, and when we return, Warning of possible death of the leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria. Stay with us.